things you think are separate and different are actually one and the same. Like the Four Nations. The Fire Nation tries to justify their acts of colonialism in the name of spreading their greatness. When someone gets you to believe that war equals peace, once they get you to believe anything, they now have power over you. The leaders that do this are often charismatic, lovable, and make you feel special, or are ruthless and fear-inducing. Avatar tries to say that ideology is the basis for discrimination, hatred, and evil. Ideology is what gives our desires narrative. And this isn't a bad thing. Avatar and Eastern philosophy as a whole is trying to say that life is an illusion. As they say, Maya, everything is fundamentally connected. There is no individual. It's this attachment and prioritization of the individual and these ideologies that breed suffering and evil. We see this in every aspect of the show, most particularly Aang, Zuko, and Korra. Zuko takes pride in his nation, the title of the prince, but it's that very same pride that gives the source of his shame and suffering. When Zuko is ripped of this idea of pride, he feels nothing but shame. The only way to combat that shame is to be humble, like Iroh said. This humility perfectly ties in with destiny, not just a cosmic destiny which Aang and Korra tackle, but a societal destiny, one of social constructs, falling victim to our governments. When Zuko finally detaches from his pride, he is no longer a slave to the status quo associated with his governments and trends. We'll get back to this subject once we understand how Aang plays a part in this. Aang is a parallel to Prince Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita, a Hindu text. Prince Arjuna is a great warrior who protects the land of India, but he comes to a moral dilemma when he has to fight against his neighbors, friends, and family in a battle. Just before the battle is about to begin, he meets with Lord Krishna, the ultimate Hindu god. As you can see, the parallel between Aang and the lion turtle. Prince Arjuna and Aang don't want to kill for both personal reasons. They're stuck in their cultural and personal reasons. Lord Krishna shows Arjuna he has to detach and see things for what they really are. Showing Arjuna that everything is connected. Everything comes from the same energy, but takes on different shapes. If you listen hard enough, you can hear every living thing breathing together. Energy bending serves as a mastery over this energy. The most powerful thing in Avatar. Mastering the flow of life one's chi, as they say in Taoism. With Aang, there's a Taoist aspect to his arc, the belief that balance is key, and everything does have the same energy, the Tao. Aang shows that he can ultimately stay true to himself in order to protect the world, finding the way, the Tao, in this chaotic endeavor of life. When we look back at the Fire Nation, it wasn't really Ozai or even Sozin that indoctrinated their people into conquerors but rather the system. Even in the Kyoshi novels, we see how the events of the past Fire Nation leaders made this act of colonization and genocide inevitable. Even in the comics, when Zuko took the position of Fire Lord, he's constantly falling victim to that very system, almost becoming as bad as a ruler as his father. This is where Korra and Zaheer come in. Zaheer criticizes the monarchy, criticizing how one person has power and control over the state and economic wealth and how the avatar an all-powerful spirit is still human which means they're still vulnerable to these systems that goal belongs to the people not the queen this is why it's very crucial for the avatar to travel the world to gain a perspective of each nation it's also crucial for them to tap in with their spiritual selves to have a stronger understanding of the world and themselves Ironically, Zaheer causes Korra to be excluded from the rest of the world for most of her childhood, limiting her to one perspective. So when she enters the real world, she acts as an authority figure. Like Zuko, Korra has an attachment, an attachment to her avatar identity. And because of that, she goes through so much suffering throughout the show, causing her to go through this beautiful spiritual arc deconstructing her subconscious issues, gaining a clear vision on how the essence of people is shaped by their environment. In the end, Legend of Korra steps into a new realm of democracy. When we look at the comics, 
It's shown that democracy is still very much manipulated by past systems. The remains of Kovira's army changing people's perceptions of the election because they still have power. This also touches on the essence and difference between spirits and humans. In the novel Dawn of Yang Chen, the spirits in the spirit world don't really do anything. They just exist. This makes sense because spirits are kind of entities shaped by outside forces. They are spirits that represent ideas of identity, gluttony, chaos, the moon, and so much more. Spirits, like ideas, change. Humans in a way are a mix between spirit and animal. Humans have a fluid and eternal nature like spirits, but also a grounded and survival nature like animals. As we know, it's all about balance. Korra and others become fluid with their nature and identity. This is a contrast to Unalak in Season 2. While he seems to be spiritual, in reality, he has a spiritual ego. To be human is to master an animal from the inside, not become it, nor abandon it. To be free of this, you must detach and observe and question. Perspective is a crucial thing in Avatar. Toph was able to see in a way no one else could. But when Toph and even Zaheer only relied on that perspective of individuality, they were blind to the perspective of unity, which Toph later overcomes. Zaheer thought that freedom was the ability to not be bound by anything, but it's that very desire that made him a slave to his own chains. Toph showed that true freedom is when you detach, not by caring, but rather by observing, making it a point through Iroh that humility and life as a whole should always be prioritized over one's ideological perspective. When Korra had PTSD, she made that pain a part of her identity. Then she tried to act like it didn't exist. Only when she forgave Zaheer, she found true peace. Forgiveness is when your pain stops being a part of your identity. Once you detach, the hatred falls. We see this with Katara. The scars are still there, but they don't define you. As we know in Eastern philosophy, there is the belief that everything has the same energy but just takes on different shapes. But what is that energy? Well, love, the ultimate reality. The air nomad's love for you has not left this world and is reborn in the form of new love. Everybody in the world of Avatar are not only disconnected from their selves, but everything else. This is the reason for war and hatred. They needed to be vulnerable and break down their defensive barriers in order to join an ever-bracing field of love and empathy. And that vulnerability is the lowest point that allows for the greatest change.